Welcome to the second part of this video series on saving Excel worksheets to separate files using Excel VBA. Let's get straight into the download file. Now what we did in the previous video, we're going to go back to the VBA editor. We used the macro recorder, discussed the importance of recording code using the macro recorder, manipulating it. Then we recorded this code. We've just been through the code and kind of intuitively got rid of the things that don't look useful and retain the things that do look useful to us. So what are we going to do now? Well, we need to build our understanding of this code. We're going to, we're going to harness this code to get the task done for us. Eventually, we're going to build a loop into this code to repeat it multiple times. So we need to really get it working perfectly. How are we going to build understanding uh, of a routine? Well, a good idea is to step through the routine and understand what each line of code is doing. Again, this is an important meta skill, stepping through code, looking at the worksheet, understanding what's going on. How do we step into code? Well, you can go to the VBA editor at the top debug and step into. Much more convenient, however, just to use the F8 key. If you're on, if you're on a Windows PC, there will be an equivalent Mac shortcut. So on the Windows PC, we're going to hit F8 and we can see we're in the routine now. So Excel's in the routine and we're in break mode in the VBA editor. So Excel won't run any code. It's stepping through the code for us. Now, what we'd like to do is, I'm just going to rearrange these windows a little bit. What we'd like to do is get uh, these windows alongside uh, each other so we can see uh, what is going on. So something like this is good enough because I'm using a screenshot. I can't use the whole screen because I'm recording the screen. You can probably set this up a bit better. Just use the Windows key and the left and right cursor to move the windows to either side, the Windows key and left or right. So here we go. So I'm going to step through the code, hit the F8 key. So this is the first uh, line of code that we're going to execute. And well, something happened there. Let's try to understand what happens. Well, a new file has been created. We can see from the name of the file at, at the top of the screen. A new file has been created. I'm going to go back uh, to the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to step through another line of code. And then what's happened here? This is interesting. So the next line of code, you'll remember, saves the file. This is the line of code that's going to do the saving. Now it's told us that, um, yeah, this is what happens when we try to save a file with the same name as another file in the same location. So we can't save two files uh, with the same name in the same location. So Excel is asking us, do we want to replace it? Now for the time being, let's just uh, replace it. But this flags up an issue for us. This is something that we've got to deal with. How can we make this save code more accurate so that so that we don't so that we're not trying to save each workbook by the same name? We're going to come across that problem every time. So this is a good little little coding challenge for us. You might want to stop the video here. What would you do? What approach should we use in order to ensure that each file is saved under a different name? Stop the video. See what ideas you've got. Well, what do we have in Excel VBA for storing information? If we want to store a piece of information, then recall it. What do we have in Excel VBA to help us do that? Variables. Variables help us do that. They're really just places to store information that we can recall and we can use for some purpose in the code. So let's have a variable and let's store the our desired workbook name, our desired save name. Let's store it in that variable so that we can recall it when we're going to when we execute this line of code to actually save the workbook. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense. If you stick with it, uh, it will make sense as we work through. So we're going to declare a variable here because we're working with variables. So I'm going to put option explicit at the top of the module. This means that Excel will check the variable names for spelling mistakes. That could save us a lot of time debugging later. And we're going to declare a variable here. And again, uh, an informative name, so save name, the variable is to do with uh, a, a name for saving the file, seems to make sense. And we're going to use a string variable because it's going to be a string uh, of text. So we've got a variable here, it's declared, so we've got a place to store this information. Now we've got to decide, well, what information uh, do we want to store there? And what name do we want to give uh, to the save file? Well, we can see we've got employee numbers here. So ideally, we'd have each of these reports in a separate file and the name of the file 
would be the employee number. So let's see uh, if we can do that first. So this piece of information here in column B, I'm going to assign that to the variable, store it there, and then try to uh, recall it later. Okay, so um, save name, the variable equals. So this is the name of the sheet is depth one, just outside of your screenshot, but you'll be able to see uh, in the file there. And what's the range? The range is B8. Okay, so if I now step through the code, hit the F8 key, step through the code, hover the cursor over that variable, I can see the value that's assigned to the variable. So that's great, we've got it stored. Now can we recall it? And where would we recall it? Where would we use this variable name again to make sure that the save file uh, picks up the right name? So we can look through the code and we can see intuitively, save as file name. Well, that must be the, the piece of code that saves um, the file to a certain name. So we're gonna delete this um, text string here and we're just gonna put our variable name in there. Because we're dealing with a variable name, uh, we don't need to put speech marks, yeah? Because we're not um, typing the name into the code manually, we're using a variable, which is a dynamic mechanism, using a variable, and this is gonna help us in the loop later, but we'll get to that later on. So what is this going to do? Let's try running the code, and let's just see what happens here. So we're going through the code, uh, assign the name to the variable. Now we're going to copy the sheet. Okay, we can see that we've got a new file here. So this looks good. And then we're going to hit um, the line of code, just executed the line of code that does the saving, and then close the file. Okay, so what have we got? Well, I'm going to go to Windows Explorer. Now this is where the files are saving. This is my default save location, as I explained in the previous video. I can see we've got a file here, which is CO472. So that seems to have worked. The code seems to have worked. We've got a file name here that corresponds to the employee number. So it feels like we're begin beginning to make some progress uh, with this task. What's the next problem gonna be for us? Let's try executing uh, this code again. I'm gonna hit the F5, F5 key this time, F5 on the Windows PC, just run the code. Now we can see again, we've got this error, error message, a file named CO472 already exists. Now, yeah, that seems to make sense. And, and we get the error code as well. That makes sense to us though, because we know in our file location that we already have a file uh, with this file name. So we've just tried to save a file with the same name. Of course, we're gonna get the error message. So this is something to look out for when you're doing this kind of task where you're creating and saving multiple files. You're gonna have problems with duplicated names. How might you manage that? How might you manage that? Again, you might wanna pause the video, try to come up with some ideas. My way of managing it is to give a unique identifier to each file. So what might, might a unique identifier be? Well, I use time because um, whenever the file is created, even if it has the same file name, then it's going to be, it's, it will be created at a different time. So if we can take that piece of information about time, put it in the file name, that's going to allow us to distinguish between different files. It's going to mean we avoid this error message about duplicating files, trying to save files with the same name. If you don't understand any of that, don't worry, just follow along. Good, so how might we do this? Well, if you're very observant, you would have noticed uh, at the beginning of the video, I've created this formula here, which is concatenating, which is connecting together all of these formulae. So what's in these formulae? Well, I've used a now formula here, the now formula in Excel, Really cool, I think. It just tells us the date, uh, the day, the time, uh, whatever information we want. If you hit the F9 key, uh, which is gonna refresh, then um, that, will, that will update the time, update the, uh, the date as well. So this is useful for us. If we wanna create a unique identifier based on the time, then we've got the information we need available for us. We just need to manipulate it. And that's exactly what I've done with these formulae. I won't go through these, but we can use formulae to take the day, take a number for the day, in this case, the 25th, a number for the month, for the year, 
for the hours, for the minutes and the seconds. So we can pick out, you know, isolate those pieces of information, which is what we've done in these cells. And you can look at the formula yourself. And then we're concatenating them using these ampersands, using these and signs, bringing this information together. And that's given us, well, it's just a sequence of numbers, but it's an informative sequence. It's given us the date, 25th of August, 2018, and the time, which is three minutes past two and 39 seconds. So let's use this information, which is going to be unique every time the file is saved. Let's use that, assign that to the variable two, and then that should allow us to avoid this duplication problem. So this is one possible situation. Uh, it's a good example of problem solving using VBA. We've got a formula, formula in the workbook working together with the code. Uh, this is often a, a helpful approach. So let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor. And we just want to update the code here. And I'm going to use an AND sign. We use the AND sign, the ampersand, to connect text strings together. So I've got B8, but I want some information off another cell too. I'm just going to copy paste this code that I know works. And let's just put an underscore in here to keep it nice and clear uh, in the screenshot. So at the moment, it's B8 and B8. That's not quite what we want. Where is the formula that contains the information? That's in H6. Yep, that makes sense. So if we just change this to H6, then we should get what we're aiming for, which is the name of, of the employee concatenated with this time code, the unique identifier. That's what we want the name of the file to be. Okay, so let's go through this F8 key, stepping through the routine. So we've assigned this information to the variable. You can just hover the cursor over the variable there. Okay, this is not quite right. Yep, I can see um, that I haven't made a mistake with the code there. This should be H6. So I'm gonna restart the code, hit the stop button. Again, uh, step through the code here using the F8 key on the keyboard. And what do we have assigned to the variable? There we, there we can see. We've got the employee name and this unique identifier assigned to the variable. This is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just going to play the rest of the code. And we can see the file flashed up there. I'm just going to do it one more time. We can see the file flashed up and then it's been saved and closed. So let's go back to the location where these files are being saved. It's important to be clear where they are being saved, of course. And what have we got here? Well, we've got two files that have just been created. And we can see we've got the employee name here with this unique identifier. And you can see the power, the value of this unique identifier now. Uh, we've got two files with the same information in, saved at different times. This is going to avoid that error message we were getting from trying to save files with the same name because we've used this unique identifier here. Okay, that's as far as we're going to go uh, in this video. I think we're making good progress with this task, though. We've got some code. The code is taking one of the reports, saving it into a separate file, and then giving it an appropriate file name. So we're making good progress. What have we got to do next? We've got to scale up this code. We want to repeat this. We want to repeat this piece of code. What's going to allow us to do that? Well, a loop is going to allow us to do that. That's what we're going to be looking at in the next video. I'll see you then.